Today, I teach you how to make history using, of all things, a microscope. Welcome to Tabletop Sandbox, where we talk about all things TTRPG. I, of course, am someone who would like to remind you that the cosmic web of galaxies and the neurons of a human brain have structures that are suspiciously similar also known as Harrison Tarr. Today we're talking about the game of Microscope. The goal of Microscope is for you and a couple of friends to sit around the table and create a history. You're not playing a game linearly, you are using a rule set to fractally create a history. And this is an incredibly useful tool for you to use for world building in preparation for running your games. Now, Microscope is by Ben Robbins, who is the person who had a blog post mostly responsible for what is known as the West Marches style of playing TTRPGs. The West Marches is the name of the region that he ran his players through as they were doing this exploration based up to you know 50 or so people campaign now microscope is a role-playing game but it is not a typical ttrpg i'm going to do a brief overview of how microscope works and i'm going to tell you how i use it to world build in my campaign setting now, like I said, Microscope is a game about building a history. And the first step of that history is to kind of get in your head an idea of the big picture. That's the first step in Microscope. Establish a big picture. This should be something broad, but that gives you an inspiration or an idea of what the history is going to be like. Some examples that Ben gives in the book are an ancient empire rises and falls. Mankind leaves the sick earth behind and spreads out into the stars. Very brief, but vastly encompassing single statements about what this history you're creating is going to be about. And now this is a game designed for anywhere from two to seven players. Ben says that it works best if you have four to five or six. You could use this in a much bigger group, which might get a little chaotic, but you could even use this on your own. I've used my interpretation of this game for solo writing the history of a world that I'm setting a novel in. Step two is to bookend your history. After you decide what the big picture is, you need to figure out what the first period is and the last period is within your history. And periods are the largest chunk of history that you'll be using in this game. They represent an age or an era. A period is something only slightly more specific than your big picture. It could be used to describe something as short as, say, five years, or it could be used to describe an age or an era that lasts thousands of years. But you don't have to decide how long that is now. That is what playing the game is all about. Filling in and discovering all the things that happen within those periods, within this set history that you have set out for you. Next, step three in the setup is creating a palette. You go around the table and everybody who's playing decides to add or ban something from the palette of this history. Now you don't need to go in and add everything that you want included or ban everything that you don't want included. This is a way to subvert expectations. If you have tropes in mind that you really don't want included in this history, Say you have an ancient empire rises and falls, or the dawn of the dragon riders as your big picture of your history. You wouldn't need to add dragons to the palette, or you wouldn't even need to remove something like laser gun, but you might want to make an addition to the palette if you, say, didn't want the dragon riders to be able to use magic. That's something that other people might assume is true, and so that's something that you would include in the palette to ban. This is one of those parts of Microscope that really emphasizes what I think is the game's strongest point. You could just sit around with your friends and make stuff up without this game, but the limitations that this game imposes really invigorate your creativity. You've probably heard creatives talk before about the worst thing you can do is just sit in front of a blank page. Ernest Hemingway never 
finished a sentence at the end of his day of writing. He always stopped directly in the middle of a sentence. Not because he didn't know how it was going to end, but because he knew exactly how it was going to end. And so he could come back the next time he decided to write and pick up and actually have something to write immediately. The limitations of microscope actually become inspirations. But it doesn't have too many rules, just a few simple ones that it gives lots of explanations and examples of using. Step four, the final step of the setup for this game, is called the first pass. Within the first pass, each player is able to come in and create a new period or an event within an existing period without any limitations that I'll tell you about in just a minute. Of course, these periods and events have to reside within the beginning and end period and adhere to the idea of your history and the palette that you've established. Now the play begins. The game functions in sort of rounds where each player gets a turn, but within each round, one player is chosen as the lens. The lens gets to choose what you're going to focus on in this round of play. The lens declares a current focus, and a focus can be really anything you want. It could be a period, a specific event, a character, a idea about the world, an organization even. The lens chooses the focus and declares it to the rest of the players. Then they get to create either a period, event, or scene. If they create a period or event, they can then choose to create an event nested within that period or a scene nested within that event that they've created. Whoever the lens is gets to create more according to their focus than any of the other players. Then each player gets to take their turn, and each player can create a period, event, or scene all according to the focus that the lens has chosen. A period, like I've explained, is a wide stretch of time, the biggest chunk of history in this game. Events are the medium-sized chunk of history in this fractal roleplay game. An event is one thing that happens. It could be something big like a battle, or it could be something small like a single decision made by a politician. An event is something that you nest within a period. You decide when it happens, and if there are already events in that period, you decide which two events it happens in between. That's a really unique thing about this game is it doesn't go in order. You don't start at the beginning and work your way toward the end. As long as you are doing something something related to the current focus, you can place it anywhere within the history. Two things that you think might have happened one right after the other could actually be years apart if somebody decides to place their event in between them. There's a lot of uncertainty, but the different brains working around the table can create some really unique inspiration and a history that no one foresaw where it was going to go at the end. The smallest unit of history that you can create in this game is what's called a scene. A scene is meant to answer a single question that somebody has about the event that you're going to nest the scene within. To set up a scene, you write that question that you want to figure out. Then the person who is creating the scene sets the scene. Where is it? What's happening? Who's there? Then. You can either dictate the scene as the person who created it, explain what happens, how it goes, everything. But if you don't yet have a clear idea of what exactly happens or a clear idea of what the answer to your question is, then you can turn the scene over to the table. You, as the creator of the scene, can decide on one or two characters that must be included in that scene. But then you go around and everybody around the table chooses which character they want to play within that scene. Here you dive into pure role playing. You take on the voice, the thoughts, the actions of a single character and play out this scene. But as soon as the answer to that question is revealed within the scene, the scene ends. If somebody wants to know what happens next, well, that's too bad. They'll just have to create their own scene on their turn to figure it out. It's also important to communicate before you actually dive into the role playing. Step four in creating a scene, according to Ben, is reveal thoughts 
So once you've chosen a character, try to get into their head a little bit and reveal what they're thinking going into the scene. That's a tool that helps everybody around you get a better idea of how the scene might go and recognize the motivations that your character has for doing or saying certain things. Then for each period, event, or scene, you decide, is this something that's light or dark in theme? Now, this is something that's entirely subjective. You might be looking at it from the perspective of the good guys. You might be looking at it from the perspective of the main character or the most historically notable character within that event or scene. You might be looking at it from the perspective of what you, as a person playing this game, want to happen. It's completely subjective. But each time you create a period, event, or scene, decide, is this mostly light or mostly dark? Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that you're playing this game all on index cards. Each period, event, and scene is listed on an index card. And you can set them up in a sprawling history on the table directly in front of you. It's a really cool way to visualize the timeline. And the way it's set up, it's just so simplistic and easy to understand while also allowing for an incredibly complex history to develop before you. When you choose if a scene is light or dark, you either color in a circle or draw a circle and leave it blank, white, to show that it is a light event. Now that's, that's, that's pretty much the entire rules of the game. That's pretty much all of the rules of this game. You can, knowing everything I've just told you, start and play an incredible game with your friends. The rest of the rulebook is really just giving you examples of play and helping you grasp a better understanding if you weren't entirely sure what that specific rule meant going in. It's a very simple game, but if you're like me, and this is the first time you're hearing about it, it's already got you excited. I think the most fun way to play this game is with at least one or two other people, but you could do it by yourself. The structure of the period, events, scenes really help you dial down exactly what it is you're trying to figure out. And having that single focus each round is a really helpful way to keep you focused on what you're trying to achieve in that specific time. Currently, I'm working on developing a world with one other friend of mine, and we are using the game of Microscope to determine the history of that world. And we realized that after we started, after we had played three sessions of creating this history, that we had started way too broad. And so for our next session, we're actually going to drill down and create an entirely new history that the big picture of which is established as the single title of a single period within that first too broad history. I'll link where you can get this as a PDF in the description below. The way that this game sets limitations and gives different people more power over the history when it comes to be their turn as Lens really is a unique way of imposing limitations that actually benefit creativity. Now, I know I recently did a video about how more rules are actually limiting, but as I said, there's not that many rules in this game. It's not a rule for every circumstance, it's more of a framework that helps you really become inspired by the few ideas you have and work within that limitation to create something that is greater than you would have even expected. If you've played a game of Microscope before, or maybe you're just curious about the cosmic web of galaxies, leave a comment below. And if you would like to hear about more game recommendations that I think are pretty cool, hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching and good night mortals.